Dear Newspaper Editor, For the past year, our poorest people have been under siege. The police have ruthlessly hunted the elderly, the ill, the hungry, and the unemployed. They detain our most unfortunate citizens and drag them to court to face charges. At trial, inevitably found guilty of disturbing the peace. They end up being sent to prison as convicted criminals. When finally released, they face an impossible choice. Either die of hunger on the streets, or return to begging and be imprisoned once again. So I ask you and your readers, is it a crime to be poor? If a person is suffering from poverty, does that mean they are committing a felony? If so, then why would Jesus, who came to this world to teach us to love each other as brothers, why would he choose to embrace poverty and stand for the poor? And why did he claim that how we treat the poor is as if we are doing those same things to him? This situation is nothing new. When I was young, Italy was going through the Risorgimento, the consolidation of all the various foreign-ruled city-states on the peninsula into a single unified country. Wealthy aristocrats held most of the land. And the vast majority suffered lives of poverty and misery. The eternal struggle of those who have nothing against those who have everything. This war against the government, the church, and the aristocracy caused mass unemployment and left many children orphaned. To make matters worse, the rich claimed the poor were unsanitary and created a public nuisance. Rather than trying to solve the underlying causes of this terrible social crisis, they pressured the authorities to arrest those destitute souls living in the squares, the gardens, and on the streets. Look at them. It's simply disgraceful. Do something. Yes, sir. Miss, Stay just back. a moment, please. Come on. What are you doing? You're under arrest, no, ma'am. Please come with us. It's all right. Children, back up. Oh, oh, Why are you doing this? Come along, children. Shaken by the suffering I had witnessed, I realized we needed empathetic, principled people of action to help change the plight of those less fortunate. Life was tough for my family, too. My dad passed away before I was two years old, leaving my mom, Anna Toscana, on her own to raise me and my three siblings, my brother John, my sister Catherine, and Francis, the youngest, who had inherited my father's name. Thanks to my uncle, Father Rafael di Francia, 
but went off to school at the age of seven. God keep you. That was the start of many long years of study and loneliness. I very much missed my mother and my siblings. But I realize now that going through those tough times was essential to my education. One day at school, during our lunch, an old man who I had seen begging out on the street entered the cafeteria. Hey, Walt! That beggar is stealing our bread and cheese! So you're hungry? Wanna eat this? <laughs> 